I was falling. Yeah, we both were. Where are we? You very clearly said we had to follow this gross tunnel and look for shelving. Shelving? I don't know what that means. Neither do I, but I listen to you. Where's Agatha? Where's Rio? You told me that Teen. they were... Kicked us off the road. The son of the Scarlet Witch kicked us off the road. What? Teen is the son of the Scarlet Witch? How do you know? I told you. Yeah. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. And I'm Steve. And this is Panels of the Pixels podcast. This is a spoiler-filled podcast about Agatha All Along, Episode 7, Death's Hand in Mine. The synopsis for this episode is, those remaining suffer the hand they are dealt on the next trial. <laughs> I see what they did there. Yeah. The hand that they were it's dealt. time to go back and read the title after you've watched. <laughs> yeah, a lot of cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So with that, uh, we already said it's spoiler full. So if you have not watched it, why are you here? Go back, stop the podcast, go back and watch, come back to us and then listen. And then for those of you like me who like to be spoiled, please stay and listen and let's have fun. All right. So first impressions of the episode as a whole. What did you guys oh. like about it? Uh, overall, story-wise, character-wise, uh, where it's going at, at this point in course, because we're episode seven into ten episodes so far. Nine. Nine? nine. I think. Yeah, it's only nine. Yeah, we got two episodes left. Oh. I think uh, I think Patty Lapone absolutely killed it. Uh, this is my favorite episode of the season. Um, I love how early on you got so many different little puzzle pieces and then the way they absolutely brilliantly put them all together. I think it was a very sad but beautiful ending for our sweet Lilia. And once again, absolutely amazing costume and, vis- and uh, visuals. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to go because I mean I watched this one three times. I just got done watching it for the third time uh, here just a little while ago, and each each what I've discovered uh, for this particular episode for, for sure is every every watch I've picked up on a little bit more, and I'm I'm excited to when it's all done to go back and rewatch because like I didn't I didn't catch in the cabin when she said I didn't like this the first time we did it. But, yeah. I apparently that it's in there. So I didn't, but I didn't catch it when, when it, in that, in that episode. So it's, it's, it's going to be cool to go back and, and see those scenes again uh, and realize how the, the writers and uh, directors and, and, you know, storytellers uh, really put this very Tarantino esque kind of story together uh, to make it all, all link. And, and then to show us in this episode, uh, you know, I call it, it's, it's a, uh, it's almost a homage to the butterfly effect. If you remember yeah. the, oh, the yeah. Aston Kutcher movie, you know, where he kept going back and forth in his, and trying his to life. change time. Yeah. Yeah. But he was actually trying to change things instead of just living it again, mm-hmm. you know, but, uh, but it was, it, that's what it reminded me. Like the very first time I watched it, that was the first thing that it reminded me of was, Oh, this is kind of like, she's going back into different, you know, she's living different periods of her life, which I was, yeah. And, and each time I've watched it subsequently, I've, I've figured out more of the story, which is really cool. Yeah. I like yeah. the Tarantino comparison. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. It's very Reservoir Dogs, very uh, Jackie Brown uh, kind of storytelling uh, way of of doing things. I think Jackie Brown kind of followed. Had a similar kind of back and forth kind of thing, but but it Reservoir did. Dogs definitely had a had a back and forth kind of. Yeah, it remind. Yeah, honestly, in my opinion, it reminded me just like you, Steve, with the uh, whole Tarantino thing with Reservoir Dogs and Jackie Brown and everything else. But Memento, 
mm-hmm. because yeah. uh, not not that she had anything written on her arm or anything like that in that case, but she did remember a lot of things. But the fact that oh my god, Patty Lapone was amazing mm. in this, and she should get an Emmy for this yeah. particular role in this particular show, in my opinion. And if they're not paying attention. They need to pay attention. Um, she's of age. She's been there for years, but mm-hmm. I think with what she was able to project within this, within the character, did perfectly in resonance to the uh, the younger character version of her. When we yeah. see her at the very end, and we do get to see her in the very beginning, young as well too. So I think it comes full circle, like a full. Mm-hmm. It's a whole sandwich. It comes Absolutely. together. Yeah. And it, it's for us to ingest at that point. And the fact that Lilia didn't realize that through their journey with, uh, you know, with Agatha all along during this whole road, she didn't realize this because her memories were dampened throughout this because of all the spells and everything that was going on. So, but she was always there constantly and she was a constant, but the fact that, you know, at the very end, she was sucked into the mud, but yet still alive and still brought out and still was able to get redemption within us. And at the very end, at the very end of this episode, yeah, we, we see an end to her. Yeah. Spoilers, everybody. There's an end to it. Yeah, but you do it, it, see the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love and that because you know throughout throughout the whole episode, she's she kept saying, "I was falling. I am falling. I'm going to fall." You know, you had the whole. She went through all of those different stages until the end when we see her let go of the table mm-hmm. and actually fall onto the swords that are now upturned because the tower has turned up. You know, uh, you know, jumping to the end of the end of the episode, we see, uh, yeah. you know, is this is this the end of the seven as well? Um, I think so. It, it I don't like, know. They we didn't see all seven. Skewers. I was wondering that. Thank you. I was wondering that myself because it only looked like, like oh, I was trying to count as they were moving. I had to go back twice. <laughs> and I only yeah, counted I didn't see five. All of them. Yeah. So th- there might be a couple more still out there somewhere. Um that are, that also, are it, it, can we reference something that's symbolic in storytelling out there? Alice in Wonderland. Alice was falling. Yeah, Very yeah, similar. yeah. The Wizard of Oz. I mean, obviously, the Wizard of Oz is a huge. The oh, Alice that's in Wonderland too. You know, the Alice in Wonderland has been a has has been a a, a constant throughout this whole. And yeah. I, I, you know, I went back and I listened to a couple of other podcasts of the previous episodes. Um, of other podcasters to hear what kind of what they're thinking of and that the, the Alice in Wonderland motif has really been throughout the episode, even to the point of of thinking about like, it's not a yellow brick road, but it's the witch's road. You Mm -hmm. know, they're on, they're on the witch's road. You have those images in the credits at the end of the, of every episode where there's a, there's definitely some Alice in Wonderland, uh, wizard of Oz, wizard of Oz, Alice in Wonderland images that we see in those in those credits while they're rolling. So yeah, uh, so yeah, all those things are 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 playing into it, and it, it they're prevalent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really do enjoy that the fact that they're trying to incorporate everything that's fairy tale, storybook, and mystique mm-hmm. into this world, and it, it's really cool in the sense that it, it gets us enraptured to actually watch every week for yeah. every episode. So what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? And it's fun to watch and try to figure out, Ooh, okay. That relates to this. Like last week's, uh, epi- the, you know, season or episode six, all about, you know, the cabin and, or episode five, yeah, well, whichever one, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, all about the cabin and, and watching and picking out, whatever horror movie it's just it's and that's what i love about the show among many things but if you don't watch marvel you can still watch this show and any genre at any age and you can still get something out of it Mm -hmm. yes 
Yes, that's what I like for the fact that you could just literally pick up at this show and get something out of it that you like. And it doesn't, you know, all you're doing is following the characters within said story. But if you wanted to continue it, you could go into the Marvel Cinematic Universe if you wanted mm-hmm. to. But yeah, it, it's, it's amazing and how the, with the writing and what they're doing. So I think they're following the same footprint that they did with WandaVision. As yeah, well, it's, it's very, it's very close. There's, there's some, there's some similar. There's definitely some similarities. You can definitely tell the shame, sh- the, the shame, the <laughs> the same showrunners um, are, are doing it. This is almost, you know, it, it's been talked about. This is almost a second season of WandaVision, of Wanda. uh, yeah. not just a spinoff kind of thing. I mean, it, it, it technically, I guess, technically, it's a spinoff of WandaVision. It's not a second season. But it's it's definitely you can definitely see those same motifs to the point where you know one of the other podcasts that I listened to it, it in Agatha all along uh, it might have been the uh, the uh, uh, the Marvel cast one that Podcastica does where they talked about the aspect ratio of changing in between episodes of four of by three actual, to six yeah of the actual the way yeah the actual the way it was filmed and the way it's 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 uh, it's then projected to us on our screens which they did that you know, with WandaVision throughout the whole season to where they changed it as it went along until they caught up to the modern era. So. Yeah, we had a lot of stuff within the episode that uh, I'm going to start off because it's kind of like the elephant in the room. So seeing all the witches from Disney and Oz films in their glory in one scene. Mm -hmm. So uh, we get Lily as Glinda, the good witch from the Mm -hmm. Wizard of Oz. We got Agatha as the Wicked Witch of the West from the Wizard of Oz as well. Jennifer Kale as (laughs) the Old Witch from Snow White. Yes. Yes. Yes, I love that. It's so demeaning. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. it's so demeaning, but the thing is she's more beautiful than the old (laughs) hag that we got in Snow White, honestly. Yeah, it was just funny. Every time Lilia tried to, to, to... to ask her questions about it. She's like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk yeah, about it. That's one of my you know? quotes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And then we get teen or also known as Billy Maximoff as Maleficent from mm-hmm. beauty, uh, sleeping beauty. Yes. I liked that choice for him because a, he's right. The cheekbones. Yeah. Don't lie. But I like, you know, I didn't pay much attention to Maleficent in the Disney scenario. I wasn't a big Sleeping Beauty fan. And then uh, my husband and I decided to watch the movie with Angelina Jolie. And I was like, oh, she was Mm -hmm. just misunderstood. She was a good person, but made to, you know, due to circumstances she didn't have anything to do with. She got mad and she did some things. And I feel like that is a very good mirror of Billy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. AKA I'm still calling him teen in my notes. Everybody Teenager, calls him to teen. Use the full, to use his full name. <laughs> yeah. You're killing me. You're using all my quotes, Steve. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we can still do them again. That's fine. It won't, it won't this is how we again. roll, everybody. You it. guys know this. <laughs> We just have casual talk. We have fun. (laughs) So (laughs) anyhow, so basically we get to this point where they're all in this world and they're all in these guises and it's like, Oh, and everything comes out. But Lilia brings truth to everything that was happening from the very beginning to the very end. Mm -hmm. And we see it play out in the middle at this point with everybody in between. And it's so sad. To me, it was like, oh, wow. It was. It was It was sad that she had to basically sacrifice herself yeah. to mm-hmm. save the group. But what, what but she learned but- and how she, you know, how they've all grown, oh, except for Agatha, how they've all grown. Um, and, you know, when she hit the coven card and uh you know went back to the flashback with her talking 
with her teacher and mm-hmm. then her realizing the love and the community. And like Stevie said earlier, she's like, I used to hate you all. Um, but now I love you. I, it was such a beautiful growth and to watch her figure out each phrase that she'd said, each thing as it played out, mm-hmm. understood it, realized she was the focus of the trial, mm-hmm. completed the trial and ended and her herself power. by yeah. saving everyone else. I just. Well, I love, I love mm. you. You're talking exactly she, how she takes that power there at the end, you know, cause she puts all the gaps together. She says, Oh, I finally got, I put all the gaps together. And then she's facing the seven or five or however many of them there are by herself. And she says, Oh, you didn't realize that when someone successfully completes a trial, like I just did, it's mm. dangerous to stick around. Yeah. <laughs> and so you see, you know, she gets her power back. And even though, yeah, it is sad that she apparently we don't we won't know for sure obviously uh she a- appears to die but uh but she gets that pow- she gets her power back or or realizes she had the power all along yeah. depending on on who you believe you mm-hmm. know and she's the one who she slams the card down and says the tower is 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 upright again or is reversed again or how you know what uh, uh, I just thought was it just was amazing when you watch it, particularly the third time watching how powerful that scene is of her just staring down all of those the Salem Seven and looking at them and going, "This is very dangerous." You know, she, each and one no of them fear. coming. Yeah, they're all coming into the room. You got the rat coming in, the 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 fox coming in, the 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 bird flying in, and all the the different creatures, the snake. Uh, all coming in, and you can see that those are those those are the familiars, mm-hmm. or them they shape shifted in, or whatever you know. But she's looking at all these kind of scary animals, and she's not scared of, at all. She's no, just, she had this. no fear. Yeah, she knew she was about to die, and she was she she was like, "Bring it on!" And then mm-hmm. she falls, and then it, we're right back to that sunny. Almost made me think. You know, I don't know what your faiths are, but it almost made me think of like heaven. It was just bright, and you know, she's in the yellow, and uh, mm-hmm. it's her color, right? Yeah. Um, just she's moving on. Yeah, but she she's starting over. Yeah, fresh. Yeah, and, but now it's almost like if you looked at her face, she's like you almost could sense she she brought with her what she just learned. So this next life or what, however you want to look at it, she's going to be better. It's going to be happier. It's going to be a brighter, brighter life for her. Yeah. yeah. That's how I saw it. Yeah. I, I think that's exactly it. Is it that she's, she's going back to the beginning, but now she's it's cyclical. Yeah. But now she knows that everything what? is connected. It's the Ouroboros, yeah. you know, the the snake eating itself. Exactly. You know, that it's it's yeah. going right back to the beginning. So yeah, I, I that was such so brilliant. But she's more aware of it, and uh, it literally it's like it, it's a cyclical thing. But the fact that she realized it towards the end, and then starts over again, mm-hmm. and then begins that journey again. It makes me think of you know, what we've, we've all probably said once in our lives, if I knew then what I, do what know, I know now. now, and it's almost like she yeah. does know then what she knows now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd like to go back to before they get to the castle and talk a minute about Agatha and teens conversation. Hmm, Two okay. things that teen said that I found interesting was one when she mentioned Wanda being his mother, he's like, she's not my mom. I have a mom. I thought that was, yeah. I, I'm curious to see if they dive more into that, but I thought that was a very, they didn't get into that, but for the fact that comment. you have to realize too, with Wanda Maximoff, what she had done in WandaVision was create these children, Billy and Tommy, and they were fictitious in her mind and magical. Yeah. They're magical in the sense that uh, they were still remnants in that world in Westview, in a sense where they could encapsulate 
other bodies, very much like Peter Maximoff or Tommy Maximoff going into other bodies. I would not be surprised that that only that we have Billy now, but at the very end, we get Peter Maximoff, her twin brother, in another body, which could be Ralph Boner. And uh, well, I think, again, I think what, more, what Becky's pointing out, though, is is the question that that he asks. It, it comes what he, the, the statement he makes about I have a mother is yeah. because there's still that William who's bleeding through. And that's right. where he, when when they when they bring him when he's at the table and, he, and she says, what's the question that you're going to ask? His question is, am I Billy or am I William? Which, oh, which okay. I, I see. It. I don't. I don't think it's. I, I think what what she's getting at is is the fact that he, when when they're on the road in that conversation, there he's still talking about the fact that I have a I have parents. I have a mother and a father back yes. in Eastview. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, exactly. You know, so I. But yeah, those others are true too. I mean, I think I think we're gonna see. I, I'd be very surprised if we don't at least see a version of Tommy. Or we get his spirit out there somewhere. And then the they body. have to give it to yeah. us, given that he woke up saying Tommy's name, and then right. that's why he wants to be on the road. Uh, I do also <laughs> like what you do. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> little fish Your running ass. across the screen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, and that's I the do- whole thing. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. No, no, no. I, I like you said, you were going to get a version of Tommy that wakes up in somebody else's body and runs really fast and goes to Tommy uh, yeah. and Billy's aid. Yeah, uh, we same may thing or may with not, Peter like said, Maximoff or, too, yeah. as well. I, I, I don't know if it'll be in body form. Yeah, I don't think Peter. I don't think we're going to get Peter. I don't. I think they're done with that side of the. I mean, it could happen. I'm not saying it won't because you've been you've been right. There's been lots of times that you're. You, I know you, it's in my notes again. <laughs> oh, about figured, something that, I mentioned that, about this episode that came yes. true. That you, oh, yeah. that you figured out. That you figured out. So it could. We could see Peter Maximoff. I don't. I. I can't. I, I don't see why they would go that direction, but they could. Uh, but I definitely think we're gonna. At the very least, I'd be surprised if we don't see some sort of indication of Tommy's spirit out there. Yes, yes. that's what yeah, I right. think. Yeah. Looking I think he'll find him, but I don't know that it'll be he'll find I, a person I, yeah, named I Tommy agree. that he can reach out and embrace. But right. if they happen to bring out the pinball wizard, <laughs> that would be pretty freaking yeah. cool. <laughs> that would be amazing. That's a good way of describing him. Holy crap. But yeah, yeah, I would love that for the both of them, too, because you got Peter, the uncle, his uh, uh, speedster, as well as Tommy himself. And it'd be so great to have them both in spiritual form. But when it comes to the cinematic universe after this, I'm sure whatever spawns out of this will go into that. Yeah. And that's yeah. why why they hired this particular person to be Billy in this particular series. So I don't think this is the last that we're going to get to see of Joe Locke. As, uh, you know, teen or, you know, Billy Maximoff. And then uh, I'm looking forward to whatever they give us, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but but to uh, go on, as you already kind of segued into earlier, Becky. Yeah, I kind of mentioned that we do get the uh, overwhelming thing that was involved. And that is one real Vidal exposing wait, wait wait before we get there go ahead hold that thought because i want to finish before we get on the road before we get back to the oh. end i want to finish the <laughs> road right, before we get to the castle but hold on to that thought you will All get right. your props uh. i promise <laughs> <laughs> okay good <laughs> um but segueing into what we get at the end of the series uh, when teen asked agatha if he saw wanda's body and then she's like yes and he knows her reality wasn't everybody else's. Mm-hmm. He's like, did anybody else see her? And <laughs> she's like, I guess, no, I, I, I don't know. And I, I appreciate them writing that in because mm-hmm. that gives them the opportunity if they choose, if they don't, it'll still be epic, I'm sure. But that it'll gives them back. an opportunity to give us some kind of 
yeah. Wanda at the end of the episode, at the end of the series. Well, we, we yeah. already know about multiple Wandas because of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. That I know, you know, Steve and I had discussed, uh, what a year or two ago, mm-hmm. and uh, we already know because there was that Wanda, Wanda that actually had to deal with that other Wanda that died and perished, and during that particular film. So we already know, but the thing is, is within this world of Westview and everything and her magic still there, I think there's still a presence of Wanda that could still bring her back in physical form. Not just magics, but also the extra that we get out there when it comes to uh, with X-Men and everything else. Because... As all you uh, panelists know and our comic enthusiasts know that Wanda Maximoff was a mutant in the comics. But in this, uh, what did they call them? Special people or something like that? And uh, because Marvel couldn't really uh, equate to it. And then now they've acquired the idea of doing mutants. So I would not be surprised if Wanda Maximoff, this Wanda Maximoff that we know, comes back in some way. And that's yeah, probably we'll why. We don't know. Yeah. Well, they opened the door. And I, I the liked door. that yeah. they did that by yeah. acknowledging, you know, it's a sensible question that one would ask. Did you really see her? And is she really dead? I thought that yeah. was a, a yeah, great. Did you true. see a body? Did anybody else see a body? Yeah. All yeah. those. Yeah. I think, I think for sure. I think there's definitely a, a possibility of us seeing a, a Wanda uh, at the end of this, this series, whether this, this season or series um, for sure. Maybe facing off against Mr. M and Miss D or whoever, who knows? But uh, we'll we'll get into that more or less when we get yeah. more into uh, more discussion. So, does anybody have anything else to say about the road before we get to the castle? Uh, yeah, the uh, yellow brick road was really scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think we're all we're all right there. Um, you know, just this. Uh, yeah, that whole conversation was interesting. I'm trying to see if there's anything in the transcript that I. Uh, Oh, there's a there's a there's an implication that that Billy gives that uh, there's a there's a a possibility that Agatha never actually did walk the road. Yes, that's you know, one of my notes that's, too. That's part saying, of that conversation okay. before we get yeah. to the castle, to where she says something about the road, and he says, "Well, I don't think you ever actually walked the road," you yeah. know. And and so suddenly we now we have this question, and and this is what other podcasts have brought up is whether what we're seeing is is Billy's magic piggybacking on his mother's magic of just extending. Agatha's. The, Agatha's. Uh, ex- yeah, Agatha, the the uh, the Westview kind of experience yeah. of of creating a reality. That's what I was going for. Create yeah. uh, that he's that he's creating this reality of the road. That it's not actually the witch's road. It's what he's creating as a reality around him. And you know, there's indications of that from when you go back to the previous episode. The posters that are in his room, the things that are that are uh, you know that are around him, that all point to you know the fact that Alice was the cop that that found him in the wreckage, you know the it's that Lilia like was the but, it, 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 well but it, no what, what I'm saying is you're, right. what I'm saying is 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 the consideration is that he's using those people, mm-hmm. you know it's not remnants of it he's using those people to create a new reality. Uh, yeah, that's not necessarily like what they are. Wanda so. was too, right? Exactly. No, that's what I'm saying. It's it's a it's he's piggybacking off from this is this is not my theory. I I won't don't want to claim credit for this because I didn't <laughs> see this at all. Other people have have put this out as a theory that he's piggybacking off from the reality that she created and is extending that to this to now the the road of to to find Tommy or or whatever he's whatever his goal is. So and if you it, it made me think. Uh, that if she had never been down the road before, if you go back to every trial, she really 
her her a lot of her facial expressions and uh, hesitancy to participate in the trials would make a lot more sense if she's this never been down the knew. road before. Yeah, or yeah. never at least been down this this, this version one. of the road. Yeah, yes. right, right. Yes, because it's more imaginative and, and it's more convoluted. And she was like, "Wait, this is not what I experienced before." Yeah, I and get Billy that. was with her when she. Every and single he, member of the coven and, and, was and, with her. Yeah. Except for it, Mrs. Hart. Ex, but the funny thing she is. She's already is, in the neighborhood. It, it yeah. could be remnants of what Wanda had left behind in Westview within Teen or Joe Locke or Billy, as it were. And then creating this. And through him, she is reinventing herself. And then with that, they're defying something that we're going to talk about soon. So, um, I will bring up something that I did enjoy because, mm-hmm. uh, sadly enough, I we lost somebody in the rock and roll and heavy metal community, and that was in Iron Maiden within the past two weeks. Uh, I'm a huge Iron Maiden fan. Uh, Paul Diano was a huge singer and for the first two albums of Iron Maiden, but they do make a reference with Iron Maiden within this particular episode, which I do love. So I have to throw that in there. It's musical and I, it's something I love. So, uh, but basically uh, uh, the fact that Lily has sacrificed herself for the ladies and the journey and, and is somewhat through the journey was good. The ending was great from the song that uh, Jim Croce had done. But uh, she does make a reference in that. So we're all going to go into the Iron Maiden to get Mm -hmm. out of here. And I thought it was amazing. So uh, I thought with the fact that Paul Diano has passed and has left us within literally the same week this episode dropped, I was like, oh. Oh, this is perfect. Yeah. Now, mind you, this could yeah. be something I'm putting in my head, everybody, but you could be like, yeah, delude yourself, Mark. Yeah, it's fine. But I really liked it for the fact that they do mention it because I, an Iron Maiden back in medieval times was a form of torture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if a lot of you know that. It's literally, it's like, it's like a, a casket with uh, spikes. Spikes yeah, inside spikes of it, stuff, yeah. and they throw your body in there, and mm-hmm. then they just shove it, and they the spikes go right into you, and yeah. then the blood bleeds out. So um, I thought it was interesting the fact that within the same week that this, this episode comes out, Paul passes away. But uh, a lot of love for Paul Diano. Thank you for the music; uh, it's always out there, and for you main fans. Sorry, my condolences as well. But we did get a cool song at the very end of the episode mm-hmm. with Jim yeah. Croce. And that was uh, Time in a Bottle. And uh, I played that for a bit. And Steve was like, why are you still playing this song? <laughs> why are you playing this song? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to play it now. But it was thanks. a good choice. It's a good choice. Yeah, it was a good song. It's just I just now heard it like five times now. So <laughs> <laughs> in like the last twenty minutes. So he was like, oh, uh, <laughs> "Mark, can can you can yeah. you turn it off, please, please?" Um, <laughs> yeah. And so the other thing that that I caught it on my second viewing, and then and then subsequently I, on the third viewing, I, I made sure to 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 pay attention to it was mm-hmm. when when uh, Lilia and Jennifer are down in the wherever they were when they went under the earth, you know, and they're, they're trying to get back to Billy and Agatha. Mm-hmm. Lilia finds Billy's yes. spell book, you yes. know, uh, she finds it in the dirt there and gives it back to him at the end of the episode, as he's walking into, as you just mentioned, Mark, the iron maiden, as he's walking, he hands it to her, she hands it to him and he goes, how did you get? And she's like, it's magic, you know, and he yeah. just, and, so he got his spell book back, which I think is that's good. There's going to be a key. There's that's, that's gotta be important to the fact that he's yeah. been using that spell book all throughout the series. And he lost it in the last episode saying, mm-hmm. you know, he, he dropped it uh, or he didn't know where he had lost it. And so suddenly she finds it uh, there. It back. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. So I think that was something to, to make a note of. I like good. And I'm glad you brought up them being underneath the road because they had an option to leave. They mm-hmm, had yeah. a way out. And I think Jen was Jen was right there, ready to go. But mm-hmm. uh, Lily is like, I I have to go help them. And basically, you know, basically, you're my you're my people. You can go if you want, but it'd be cool if you came with this. And of course, Jennifer makes the right choice and goes. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's just another amazing thing about Lilia. She could have bailed, probably saved her life. And she didn't. She chose to go help at least one really decent person. Yeah. Um, I like when they got there. And Lily is upset about the mess on the table with the cards. And it's a very humorous moment with uh, (laughs) Agatha and team arguing. Well, she did it. No, he did it. Uh, Just going back and forth about who made the mess on the, the, the board. Yeah. And then I've got into my notes when, when she asked who was the querent and uh, the, the querent, what's (laughs) Uh, the the querent, the querent, are we going to go through this? Is he playing it? I don't know why. I've just, we just talked about, please don't. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I I didn't know it was sharing. It, it was. <laughs> so, anyway, but there's this whole moment with with the with with the querent. With who is the querent? You know, and I'm just like querent, and it's like they all kind of go around the table about you know because uh, uh, so yeah, that was funny. I thought that was that was funny since we had the whole uh, don't don't keep me in the closet last week or two weeks or yeah uh, last or two episodes ago. Don't keep me in the closet, you know, uh, uh, kind of thing. So and then that's a good. The, that was a good. That is. Yeah, and you then know. the quote that the quote that I have that uh, when we get well when we get to quotes when when I'll say it I'll say it now when I've already kind of said it was when they're taught when there are on the when he's asking her questions on the road and she said well you want straight answers ask a straight lady yeah so uh, <laughs> making That's that, good. that, that yeah. kind of offhanded remark about uh, about the sexual orientation there so I I really did enjoy the episode overall um, Patty Lapone amazing. Within yep. the whole episode from beginning to end, uh, gives a great uh, experience with the character and performance. And honestly, I, I'm still saying it right now Emmy Award winning. Please give this a nod. If they don't, I'll be upset. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, the, there are so many few fantasy, sci fi, or uh, dramatic stuff that is within sci-fi that I do that I cover that I would say yeah I I think she needs that especially with her age I think she's it, it's just desserts she does deserve it I agree yeah, yeah. Um, can we talk about um, almost okay fine almost couple I'll more notes talk. before we get there I'd like go, to run through go ahead the the um first off how cool it was that they did the flashbacks back and forth between when she originally said what she said that didn't make any sense and then Mm -hmm. they did it again where we actually saw what was happening and i that i said it earlier in my overall thoughts i loved how they gave us the puzzle pieces again, but then we got to watch and put it together. It was almost mm-hmm. like, uh, I don't know, a, a terrible reference, but it's the only one I can think of with uh, something, a puzzle is Hellraiser when the box, you're watching the box uh, put itself back together. Um, that's how I saw that in my head was like uh, the major or just a puzzle being put back mm-hmm. together. Um, and then uh, that it was her, that was in her hallucination and the first trial. Uh, I think I asked that question early on. Who was that? And it was her. So yeah. that was a nice, that gave us clear. And it, even the other lady we got to see, we realized who that was mm-hmm. and what she said to Lilia, which uh, you've got the transcript, Steve. I'm not hundred percent sure what it was, but I thought that was a nice, they gave us a closure on that. 
Yeah. Um, I liked the cards. I liked the meaning, they, the card they gave to each person. And I wrote them down, you know, the Queen of Cups, which is Lilia's card, uh, passionate, considerate, loving, intuitive. I think that was uh, very fitting for her. The Three of Pentacles, which represented obviously her coven. Uh, Jen being the high priestess, uh, and what, when you, I did some Googling, I kind of did a deep dive on the tarot cards, uh, <laughs> but I'll save you all a lot of that. But, uh, the high priestess, well, she said she was a leader, but it, it's also a lot of mystery and insight. So I'm still hoping we get, uh, more. I know we've had her trial, but I'm hoping mm-hmm. we get more backstory on Jen and, why she doesn't have her powers. Does she have her powers, but is she blocked and can't afraid to use them? I, I would like to know that. Uh, the Knight of wands, uh, all about bravery, which was Alice when she saved, uh, Agatha, you know, Agatha was the uh, three of swords, which is about grief, which leads me to believe that we still haven't gotten to the full backstory of her and her son, There's a lot more there. Billy being the tower um, and that she mentioned when she gave him his reading that, you know, the tower a certain way is avoiding disaster and coming close, but surviving. And that's obviously that's Billy, Um, which brings me to what Mark is dying to talk about. We didn't (laughs) see the card. But they did a great job uh, <laughs> referencing the death card. Mm-hmm. You're right again, Mark. Mr. Take it away. Yeah. Um, we kind of, they kind of alluded this all the way back in WandaVision. That's all about death. And we've had <clears throat> people that were affiliated with death herself. Uh, unfortunately, within the MCU, we never got the true Infinity Gauntlet or stones, not gems, everybody. And uh, the point of Thanos in the comics was in reference to appease the thought and love of death, Miss Death. So now we have death coming in. And... If you think about the show overall with uh, WandaVision, WandaVision was revolved around dealing with death, uh, Wanda dealing with Vision's death, and it was called WandaVision. And her thought after Vision had passed and her world and like literally putting a spell over Westview and dealing with her grief. And everybody else had to deal with death with surrounding Wanda during that time, whether it be Westview or Eastview at this point. People have encountered death. Even Billy, where he's now as he's encompassing teen, which he doesn't know who he is. So these people are coming back in some way through this power. I think it's a manipulation of death. And we kind of talked about it during WandaVision because Mephisto has a hand in everything. So for those of you who do not read the Marvel comics back from like the late 60s, 70s, all the way into the 80s, probably into the 90s and the 2000s and the new millennium, um, Mephisto is literally the devil at certain point, but it's Marvel's idea of the devil. It's evil, but death is still death. But the thing is, is that we didn't get her in the whole infinity gauntlet or the infinity uh, wars movies. So we didn't get her within that. So now we're getting her here in the mystical aspect, which is pretty cool. And I do admire it and I like it in the way they're structuring it and working it. So that way they don't offend certain people uh, within religion or anything like that. Honestly, uh, it's its own new world. And that's the way to perceive it. 
if you're very religious, like a lot of people. And I understand that completely. Uh, you have to keep, keep it in the same reference and um, framework of how Marvel does their writing. So basically, at the very end, she tells her, yeah, I'm death. And she is death, but she's always been there in Westview because that's where Wanda had died. That's where Vision was dead. That's where a lot of people had passed within Westview. And then people were reborn to manipulate. But who's manipulating death at this point? Mephisto. So I think at the very end of this season, we'll get Mephisto. But until then, death will be priority of what Agatha and the remaining few have to appease to get to her end result of what she wants to be and how she wants to uh, enter this world again as. And I don't think Tom uh, Billy is going to be an issue. I, I said Tommy, but Billy, I don't think Billy's going to be an issue. Billy still will be there. Agatha will always be there. But anybody else next to them, they might be casualties. And that's just my prediction. But um, I think it, yeah. Go ahead. I, no, I no. think it I think it was interesting when Rio revealed herself as actual death. Um that I think, you and y'all correct me if I'm wrong or if you d- disagree, but it would make sense that she isn't always with them on the road. She didn't show up until Mrs. Hart died. Mm-hmm. And then she, but she disappeared. Showed, but she showed up at the very beginning of Agatha's story. But Wanda was dead, right? Wanda was dead, and that was what started it. It was like literally uh, Agatha woke up from whatever, thought she was an investigator, went to the morgue as a, a detective, saw Rhea Vidal, and Rhea Vidal stated at the very end, in the very beginning that this is not real. If you recall. Well, so you think but, Wanda but, being dead wasn't real? I think it was a way for death to bring Wanda back. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I know I'm, I'm not tracking I'm, I'm that, but okay. I'll, out of the I'll, way, but you know, this is uh, Marvel lore and Marvel uh, kind of uh, writing, but I think they're going to try to get, and if we do get her at the very end of this particular mo- uh, series, I should say, season, if we do get our character back as WandaVision, that would be amazing, amazing, uh, amazing. Uh, but yeah, amazing for the fact. Yeah, I'm that- not. I'm not trying. But uh, but I, it's possible, I guess. But no, I, I like. I, I like. Yeah, I, I I think it's it's you know it's clear that obviously I, I think what was really the other cool thing about that ending when they revealed Rio as being death was that Billy kind of looks at Wanda and is like. I, I I can't find it in the in the uh, in the transcript, but where I always she, like the bad boys. Yeah, I always like the bad boys, and you figure you realize that Wanda has known all along who Rio is. Rio was. She knew all along that Agatha. Rio was death. Agatha. Oh, Agatha yeah. knew. <laughs> Agatha, I'm right along yeah. there with you talking yeah. about Wanda. Yeah, I knew who you were talking <laughs> yeah. about. I Agatha, just had to Agatha, correct it. Agatha yeah. has known all along that Rio yeah. is death, and she's just like, well, yeah, I like the bad boys, you yeah. know. So uh, I thought that was that was really cool that in that indication that she's known all along who yeah. Rio was and just didn't tell anybody, you know. So and I'm with you, Becky. I'm I'm I think you're right that you know we didn't have. Rio on the road until after Mrs. Hart died. Mm-hmm. We haven't mm-hmm. really seen her unless there's death involved. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, we, we didn't see her in the last episode. Um, we see her, we see flashes of her in this episode. Yep. And so I'm looking forward to see what we're going to see in the next couple of episodes with her. Yeah. It'd be interesting. I'm really, really curious about what they give us. I have end. one question about a conversation, a comment that mm-hmm. Lily has said to Agatha, and you guys may not know 
And this may be something we just watch for in the next couple of episodes. But she looks at her and she says, when she calls you a coward, hit the deck. I think I think that's another when I watched it for the third time and I I heard her say that I think that's going to be something in the future that she's seen. Okay. That, if so, that makes we, it, so that doesn't reference something we've already seen. Yeah, I don't exactly. think so. Okay. I don't think so. Either. I think yeah. which which may which may indicate that we're going to see Lilia again, some form of her, whether we see an astral projection of her or or uh, something else, because she wouldn't know. I mean, she wouldn't know that unless she was present. Because like all the things we saw her know. Like like we 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 get we get it told out of sequence where we see we see the scene where Agatha tackles her to the ground, and she says, "What are you doing?" And, and Agatha's like, "You were about to get skewered." And then it's like five or ten minutes later that we see a scene where the sword is coming down toward uh, yeah. Lilia, yeah, and yeah. you realize that's the moment where Agatha tackled her. To the that's that's the moment where where Agatha sees the sword and tackles her to the ground, and we were see, we were watching it out of out of sequence, mm-hmm. sort of. Okay, so I, I think there's going to be something that's going to happen out of sequence. That's a good point. Um, that's that someone's going to call. That's yeah. That that someone, whether that someone is Rio or who it is, is going to call, or if there was if there was a moment. And I can't. I don't know if there was is a it moment from one division. I. That's what I'm that's thinking. What is, I was, was like, was is there? It? I. I'd have to go back to. I. I don't remember in one division a scene where somebody called Agatha a coward, but m- maybe there's something in uh, that happened in one division that I, I don't. don't so we're gonna we're gonna. <laughs> I, I think we're gonna find out, but I think that's something that we haven't seen yet. I think that's okay. that's gonna be a scene we haven't seen yet. Yeah, that's what I figured, but I didn't known. know if you guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know more than I do, so I didn't know. I I thought, oh, okay, did this happen in one division? But I, I'm excited. I'm not excited. I'm very interested to see yeah. what that means, and I love that that's a way to keep Lilia alive, alive in the yeah. story, even though she's gone. Because I don't I, think they're. I hope as much as I love the other two character, the characters that we've lost, I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know that bringing him back. Mm-hmm. Well, and there's, there's still, work. yeah, I don't think Alice and I don't think Alice is coming back. I don't think Mrs. Hart is coming back. No, uh, but I would, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see Lilia come back. I definitely think we need to see more of Jen because that, and I've got the transcript now in front of me that when they're going into the Iron Maiden, you know, when she gives Billy the, she gives Billy the, the spell book um, mm-hmm. and he says, thank you. Uh, and then she tells Jen to go, and Jen says, "I'm not going before you." And Lilia says, "You're the path ahead, Jennifer." And then yeah. sends her into huh. the Iron Maiden. So I think we're something in the next episode is going to be possibly Jen's trial, or I know we talked about Billy having a trial. Well, Jen's but- had her trial. She was the okay. first trial. You're right. You're right. So there, there must be something. There's, there's got to be something more with Jen though, because she's still alive. You know, so yeah. there's got there's going to be something more with Jen on the path ahead. Same you know? here. Yeah, and, and she was still she was still stuck in the mud with Lillian, as I recall. Right? What? No. Jen. What, what do you? But no. When? I'm talking about the I'm talking about the end of the episode. When I know all the end of the episode. I'm talking about a couple episodes ago. Yeah, so she had, was in the. Yeah, she was last, in the mud with last with episode. Lyman. Yeah, yeah, she was in the mud with Lilia and Jen, yes. But I'm yeah. talking about the end of this episode when they're going into the Iron Maiden, Jen is still dressed as the the hag witch. Yes. And and she pushes her into the Iron Maiden and she tells her you're the path ahead and then sends her and sends her on. No, they're Almost. not still they're out of the mud. They got out of the mud. I know Remember, that. We, I know we, that. We, yeah, I, I'm we, still we, think that she, uh, honestly in my mind, I'm still think, think thinking that she is still there constantly. I don't know why. In my head. And, yeah, I watched everything, everybody. Yeah, I did. I know that she went into the Iron Maiden. She came out of the mud. But the thing was is that Lillian had a proper send-off that we had seen. Now, we're probably going to get an astral version. But are we going to get an astral version of Jen? 
now. But Jin hasn't died yet. Jin's Jin was just Jin's still alive. Jin's still yeah, alive. I know, but uh, but he, she was thrown into the Iron Maiden. But that but was their exit. Everybody, but that was their because exit they out of the there, there were steps. Yeah, there were steps going up. There were steps so going up. That's why Billy, Agatha, and Jen went into the Iron Maiden because they that was the exit after they passed trial. the trial. And Lilia had to stay behind to fulfill her destiny to kill the seven or right. part of the seven at least. Right. All right. So I'm catching up, basically stating that Jen could probably follow up at the very end. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that she could be the one be like Lillian at the very end. Lily. All right. Yeah, she could have a sacrifice moment. She could die. Yeah. Oh, I'm we sure she no I'm, idea. I'm, yeah, that's what oh, I'm she's like that she's yeah. going to. Um, but to touch on what you were saying, Steve, that what she said to her is you're the path forward. Mm-hmm. Her card, the high priestess, part of that is a leader. So okay. she may be what's like Lilia was this time to spearhead them being saved. Maybe mm-hmm. that's Jen's the end of Jen's path, but I want them to tell us who that weirdo was at the sink when she, the first trial, how hmm. she blo- got her powers blocked, give us her backstory much like they did Lilia's this time. Because they didn't give us any of that other than a hallucination with Jen. So they've mm-hmm. got to be saving that for a reason. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and I'm still looking. I'm looking back at the the transcript again because there's that moment when we're seeing the flashbacks and we reveal that, that Rio is death. And we get that statement that Rio says, you get your power and I get my bodies. Yeah, so, when they were in so, the, ca- uh, not when the, cabin. In the cabin. Yeah, when they were in the cabin. And then, then yeah, it's 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 the all gets muddled, booth. right? Yeah, it, and, then, and then at the end, then it jumps to the cabin. So, yeah, there at the end when she's filling in the gaps, we're getting all their, all that stuff. But, yeah. So I'm sorry. I was just I was looking at the the transcript again. But but no, I'm I'm excited to see where the rest is going to go. Uh, like I said, I Jen's Jen's got to have a part to play here. A big uh, one. With, whether it's going to be some sort of sacrifice, because you know if you look back, you can kind of see where Alice sacrificed herself. Here, Lilia sacrificed herself. Is Jen going to sacrifice herself? You know uh, what's what's going to happen? So. The last point I have is more just an observation. I'm glad I'm glad the Salem Seven was brought back because I was beginning to worry <laughs> that it was gonna be one of those plot lines they brought into the story mm-hmm. and then they just disappeared. Yeah. So I'm glad and then and they had an intricate part in this episode and I thought it was very cool CGI and editing when they turned from animal form into their creepy quote unquote human selves. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I love how they do that. They are yeah. by far the creepiest villains I've seen in a while. Yeah. Yeah, I for agree. sure. I like I like that we got a confirmation of what happened to L- uh, Lilia's coven that made her so not want to be part mm-hmm. of a coven. She says, she says, I foresaw, I saw all of them getting sick and dying, and that happened. She and, and I wasn't able to stop it. You know, she tells the the teacher, her grandmother, whoever that was that was teaching her. She says, I wasn't able to stop it. Um, so I, I I like that we got confirmation about what happened to Lilia's uh, other coven, uh, yeah. and why she why she was so reluctant to be part of a coven. Mm-hmm. That was it. I'm glad we got that too. Yeah. Yeah. I'd forgotten about that. Glad you remembered that. I was looking at the transcript. <laughs> <laughs> Cheater. No, I'm kidding. No, I know. Um, my, uh, my last sentence here, two last sentences, is she gets to go back to the beginning. And I love that. I love mm-hmm. the look on her face when she sat down and said, I'm ready. Uh, and then time in a bottle, I think, based on everything in the episode, was a really good choice for yeah. the closing credits. And if you look 
I've started looking at the closing credits because it seems that something from every episode is in the closing credits. And I remember seeing the tarot cards, but that table that's in the, um, in the castle, I think is the same table that she's at with her teacher or whatever. Oh, possibly. Yeah. It's probably a tarot table, a tarot card. And it looks like the same one in the credits with the, Mm. the, some of the similar cards. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. That's all I have. That's, that's all I've got. Uh, no quotes. Uh, the only other quote that I have that I think that I didn't do, I think I already said it was the focus up Calderu. We can be culturally offended later when she's, when, uh, Lilia was so upset about being dressed like Glinda the Good Witch and, and, uh, Jennifer being dressed up like the hag. So, yeah. yeah. All right. We said all mine earlier. Steve. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, I'm kidding. That just means I picked good ones. Yeah, you, you, did. Did. you did. You did. All right. I, I guess that kind of completes our coverage on uh, Agatha All Along, season one, episode seven. And uh, we can move into where else can listeners hear us? So, Becky. Uh, I can be heard here on Panels to Pixels and also on Adrenaline Cinema. And I would like to ask anyone listening to please check out my new podcast. Thanks to the help of Mark and Pirate Corpse Entertainment called What's On Tonight. It's a podcast about TV, movies, and more. And uh, Mandy and I just finished recording our first episode where we cover the first three episodes of What We Do in the Shadows. And I would love it if all of y'all would check it out. Season six. Yes, season season six, the final season. Okay. Cool. Steve? Uh, right here on Panels to Pixels, you can hear me. Uh, I send voicemails to various other podcasts that our friends do and that they uh, they indulge me and play play those. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's about the extent for me right now. Uh, and well- I'm going to make him say it here that he will be sending what the, what's on tonight a live Steve. I, I, will, I will send a live Steve. Uh, I'm going to shoot for episode four of the season six of what we do in the shadows uh, coming out October 28th. I'll shoot for sending a live Steve for that one because uh, awesome. yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I love that. Sh- that's a show that I've been watching uh, almost since it started. I think in uh, uh, I, I was, a, I didn't know anything about it until I, I, until I think the TV show and then I saw the movie and uh or I kind of, I, I think I saw the movie. I'm trying to remember something happened at the end that I'm not sure if I saw the movie or not. I might have to go watch the movie again. You probably <laughs> watch the show and then somebody said, Hey, there was a movie. And you're like, like I did and go, Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm not sure if I watched the movie or not. I, 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 yeah. I seem to remember watching it, but then something happened and I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It, it's one of those weird things. Like you didn't know what came first, the movie or the show. Yeah. So. Well, if you want to come on and do any episodes with us, let us know. And at the end of the series, we're going to do a series recap where we okay. talk about the characters and favorite moments throughout the the season, the series. So if you want to jump on for that, please. Yeah, we'll, you're well, welcome we can, anytime. We can try to coordinate that up, set that up. Sounds good. Awesome. Cool. What about you, Mark? Well, as everybody knows, you could hear me always here on House of Pixels podcast. As always, as we continue to do more stuff that was created from comics to movies to TV to animated, Steve is always here. So will Becky, as well as Rob Moda, and anybody who else wants to jump in and have fun in the conversation. But you can also hear me as well on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment as well. And there we cover action adventure films, uh, suspense thrillers, all that stuff to get your adrenaline going. Everything that's there. 
we had done, and as you've already heard her voice, Becky was on there for us with uh, Interview with a Vampire and for Queen of the Damned. So uh, we did cover that. We'll be back for Mayfair, which is season two when it does come back. But we already did a brief overview of <laughs> Mayfair, which is season one. But since it's the spooky season and it is Halloween season, which I do enjoy and I love, I love the month of October because it's all spooky. I love anything Halloween. Uh, we have at least a good three episodes for you. So first off, you'll get Friday the 13th part five with myself and Jamie Dimmick. She and I cover Friday the 13th part five. And that's our ongoing legacy of Friday the 13th films from the Paramount series, as well as my friend Ben Elmore. And we're going to be doing Dracula 1931. So that will be coming out to you. And then our friend Billy Spaulding, who we had on for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast when we were doing Interview with a Vampire, as well as Queen of the Damned. He's going to come on and we're going to do Long Legs. And maybe at the very end of the month, right at the tip, very tip of November, probably. I would just say the within, tip. Just the <laughs> tip. Within the first five days, I would say, we're probably going to do The Substance. So if you have not seen the movie, go out there, catch it. It's on streaming. It's on a digital download. Very interesting movie. If you like Cronenberg's work with The Fly remake, Dead Ringers, anything Cronenberg has done, you'll find this interesting. Very cool. Awesome. But other than that, uh, you could hear me here, as always. Uh, Also, to look forward to more for the Pirate Entertainment Network. Uh, We are in the new year going to be, you know, we're spotlighting basically Becky and her uh, friend Amanda as they are doing what we do in the shadows. Billy is going to be doing uh, Kevin. uh, What is the name of the episode? Kevin can F himself. There you go. Kevin can F himself. That's on AMC plus. It was a three season series, but he's going to be covering that. So I I had a brain for it at a certain point. I had to have Becky here as a reason. It's Uh, on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, it's on Netflix. It was, yeah, it was on FX, but now it's on, uh, no, you're right. It was AMC Plus, but Originally now it's on it Netflix. On yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that. No, no, no. It's okay. But, uh, yeah, he's going to be covering Kevin and F himself. So uh, we're going to spotlight those on the Pirate Core podcast. So you could check that out. And then they'll uh, subsequently do their own thing. And then, uh, yeah, that that's something to look forward to into the new year, as well as I've yet to announce it. I don't have a name. Sorry. Nobody has given me a great name to talk about music. And I love music. So we're going to do something like that musically. And that's going to be part of the Pirate Core podcast. Uh, it's going to be twice monthly. And then uh, we're going to talk about albums, artists, genres, producers, engineers, everybody that gets into it, and, and musicians. So uh, that's going to be an, an, an individual podcast, Pirate or podcast. So uh, keep aware of that. So other than that, that's about it. But for those of you who want to send in feedback, because we did announce when we were going to do this feedback and we never got any, <laughs> just to let you know, uh, you can easily go to our Facebook group, which will be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Literally, I put an image out there, everybody. All you have to do is leave your comments and thoughts in the image below of what episode we're doing. I did it for this one. We didn't get anything. It's not me complaining. It's just me stating. Um, On top of that, whatever happens in Facebook goes into Instagram. So it's simultaneously. So literally, all you have to do is put your thoughts and comments below the image. Uh, If you feel that you don't want to send those comments that way. You want to send yourself a long winded email. Like I used to do all the time to all my friends 
And I know Jason Gabasi used to hate it because he was like, oh, wow, this is like two page. I have to abbreviate it. <laughs> and he's done I'm it. Like, now. <laughs> I'm, kidding. Like, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's okay. That was funny. He's true, everybody. I do talk a lot. So uh, literally just email us panels to pixels one at gmail.com. Panels spelled out P A N E L S two two T O and pixels and the number one at gmail.com. Write yourself out a full long email. So that's a I dissertation. Could, yeah, like a dissertation. Exactly. Yeah. Like a Bible, <laughs> as it were. And just we could read it and yeah. it would be the word of yours. Anyhow, um, and if you feel like you'd don't want to do that. You want to just record yourself and say, I want my voice being heard. Literally, we all have these cool devices, phones, iPads, tablets, computers. In the event of COVID, we had headphones, microphones. You could record yourself. All you have to do is literally just record yourself, send it as an attachment, and it's as if you're on the podcast yourself. So uh, we'll play that. Uh, we could be found also on YouTube. All if you do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast. All one word. Panels to Pixels podcast. If you do Panels to Pixels, you're going to get Josh. He's the pretty boy with the nice pretty hair in England. He's got the good accent. But I love Josh, and you could subscribe to him too as well because I, I like to promote him as well. Anyhow, uh, subscribe. Uh, ring the bell. And you'll see the artwork that we have for our podcast, and you'll know the difference, obviously. So uh, do that. And then, obviously, if there's any rating or review for Apple Podcasts, Spotify, as always, please give us uh, five stars if you like what we do. If you don't, fine. That's I understand. But please leave comments because comments are key, whether they be negative or positive. If you like what we do, awesome. If you don't like what we do and there's something that you want us to change, let us know. There's always room for change. Anyhow, well, that about wraps up what we have for this week on Pounds to Pixels podcast. I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm the original Green Witch. <laughs> and I'm Steve. I'm not a witch at all. <laughs> and I'm Frank Boner. Anyhow, <laughs> same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This is Panels the Pixels podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, Spooky everybody. Dreams. <laughs> Good night, Bye-bye. everybody.